So why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? Why isn't the weight loss taking place? Why is it not working? What's broken? What, why, why, why can't I just lose those pounds? I've tried everything, I've tried everything, but it's just not happening. Right, so it, here's some of the, the questions that I uh, tend to get every now and then. And, and a lot of it is actually stemming from, um, sometimes it's just the routine that's kind of gone wrong. So let's, let's just start with um, the, the concept of having the health first. So your, your focus should be your health first, first and foremost it's your health. We're not concerned about the vanity and the, the well, well, we shouldn't be anyway. I mean, our priority should, should be our health. So we're carrying those extra pounds. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, looks wise, you may have your own sort of thinking about it, but initially the first thing we should be thinking about is how is this going to affect our health? And obviously uh, there have been numerous studies done on the fact that obesity and excess weight does have a direct correlation to, uh, a variety of uh, chronic diseases. So, you know, our goal and our mindset should be, we should really do need to work on that mindset and really understand the frame through which we look at this. And it really should be health first. Your personal health should come first. Then the weight will normalize. Secondly, it's secondary to have the weight normalize. And and if we can understand that order of things, then obviously that's uh, it's just, it, you're you'll be on, on your way. Uh, that's the key thing to understand, start with. Then we need to just think about our, our, our cycle of eating. Are we starving ourselves when we're trying to lose weight? Because I know a lot of people will just think, right, okay, I'm gonna lose weight, we're gonna, we're gonna stop eating. We're gonna just stop eating. And uh, the best one I've heard is, yeah, I'm just gonna have some lettuce. I'm just gonna have a bit of lettuce, like eat like a rabbit, basically. It's, it's very common. I mean, the, the, this is like a natural way of how human beings t seem to work. They just go in one direction. And we're not that different, actually, because, you know, it's, it's, everyone is saying similar things. So you'll start starving yourself. But then what that happens there is that can lead to a yo-yo, uh, a yo-yo effect where you're starving, but then you develop cravings and you go crazy out after the food that you, you see all of a sudden. Or you'll see a cake and you just go, you can't handle it because the stress levels in your body are, uh, are increasing and then your adrenal glands are having to work hard through this stress and your adrenal glands are actually essentially going to be calling out for more sodium, more, more, more salts. So, uh, uh, you know, so we need to be careful there. So starvation, that's something that to, to be aware of. Are you starving yourself? Um, I'm just laying out some questions for you here, basically, just to be asking yourself and, and sort of the things and systems that you could start to adopt straight away. Uh, are you, are you consuming too often? That's the other one where there's a lot of, uh, people that I've spoken to in the past and somebody's been teaching them a methodology where you should be having lots of small meals throughout the day. The problem with that is that every time you eat, your insulin spikes and then it comes back down again and then you eat again and the insulin spikes again. So your insulin is actually constantly high in your body, which is, that's just no way to, to, to be. Uh, I mean, on average, they've found that people eat up to 16 times a day. I mean, that's just... That's mind blowing. I mean, if you, and that's most people. So you may be falling into that. Um, um, and, and it's not that includes coffees, teas. It doesn't include water, but it includes teas, coffees, the, the small sort of chewing gum that you might have on the side or a little sweetie or a bit of chocolate or whatever it might be. Um, every time you're consuming, you're switching that system back on. So that's something to be aware of. And and obviously, it, have you considered fasting? Have you considered fasting? I know, again, with fasting, it's one of those things that started slowly moving into the mainstream. Um, but there's obviously fasting goes back yonks. It's just one of the it's an old traditional uh, way of being. I mean, animals fast when they're ill, they start to fast because they're trying to cleanse their body. So obviously we don't want to get ourselves to a place where we're ill. So uh, fasting is is a way to go start to fast the way you could fast you could literally you're fasting when you're sleeping anyway so you just carry on the fast and skip breakfast and then have lunch and then have dinner so that's an easy way to just start intermittent fasting and then as you work your way up to it and your body starts to adapt and your stomach starts to normalize in size you could start to maybe have a later lunch start to have lunch later or you could um yeah so you could have a later lunch and then eventually you could get yourself to a place where that lunch is quite dense and fulfilling. 
and it's sufficient for you to a place where you actually don't need to have dinner um, in, in the evening. Again, with dinner in the evening as well, you want to be a little careful there. You don't want to have it too late because uh, it could just sit on you. Um, one thing I actually found really helpful recently, just come to me now, is uh, chamomile. Chamomile is, is fantastic for chamomile tea. You can purchase chamomile tea. So chamomile is massive for helps with digestion. That's if you've eaten a little too late and, and you have a bit of congestion and, and you need a bit of help with digestion. Chamomile tea, get, get a bit of that down. You, but uh, uh, just going back to the fasting. So you want to get your eating down to as late as possible, maybe uh, work it into the late afternoon. And then that can be the only meal that you have. And that eventually you could be on the OMAD diet, which is one meal a day. So you could be having one meal a day and before you know it, you're fasting 22 to 23 hours per day and then you're, you've got this small window of eating. And I think that's just a fantastic way to transition into um, f- correcting your diet, actually. So what I would suggest is eat whatever you're eating, but eat it in a smaller window. Start by doing that. And I think that in itself will start to really, really uh, create some change. And then eventually you start to, when you have control over the regularity and the intervals that you eat, then you can start to slowly, slowly merge in uh, these extra uh, healthier foods or remo- remove, first of all, first remove the stuff that's not serving you. Um, the first things that I tend to recommend to remove is uh, all dairy, all dairy and wheat. I would remove all wheat and dairy these are very important. We need to start to slowly move, uh, eradicate these from our diet and then start to replace them with more uh, wholesome foods and eating more from the land, how our ancestors would have basically eaten um, and keeping it simple. A lot, again, we human beings, we forget this, but human beings evolve through scarcity. You know, at one point we were scavengers and now we're just sitting there having anything and everything and we have so much choice around us and we're being sold to, we're being sold to all the time. So, I mean, I could do a separate lesson on, on fasting, but I just want to drill that point home. Is we, really, we, we really overlook the, the, uh, the concept of fasting. So we can start doing that straight away. That, that might help move things, move the count, uh, move things forward. Uh, okay, so are you counting days? Are you counting days? This is something that is very natural within human beings, is that we... Start by saying, right, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to lose weight. Now I'm counting. Day one, okay, I'm, I'm corrected this diet. Okay, I'm not eating this for this day. Day two, okay, second day without eating whatever, my favorite food. Oh, third day, oh my God, I made it onto the third day. And then you're counting each day. The problem with this is it's, it's similar to building muscle or, or having any type of gain in life whereby you have to sort of just forget the end goal and create the routine around it and just let that goal fall fall into your hands. So um, I I would suggest just sort of forget the whole concept of, oh, I must lose weight. Just reframe it, change it in your mind. It's not really about losing the weight. It's about correcting what I'm doing now. And when I can correct these, make these changes, then obviously I'm going to have this outcome. Um, So let's stop the counting of the days. I'm going to put a big... Big cross on that. We don't want to be counting anything. We don't want to be counting our progress or anything. We just want to just take that pressure off ourselves and just keep moving. What's your routine like at the moment? Do you have a busy routine, or do you just sit around all day just wondering and thinking and then watching the TV and doing? This is important actually because if your routine, if you're not moving with your routine, then it's kind of difficult because your mind is not occupied. There's nobody holding you accountable. You're not moving. There's just nothing's happening. And so all of a sudden, food becomes the only thing that's happening. And so I guess this is, you know, really, we really need to look at our routine. I, I love the, my example, it's an example I just thought of just recently, actually. I was talking to, to somebody and it was it, the, the, these courier drivers, for example. You've got all these DHL drivers and these parcel force drivers and they're driving around delivering all day. And now you've got Amazon delivery people they're so busy they're running around they're on the they're they're being watched their time they're on the 
they're, they're, I'm pretty sure they've got some sort of timer attached to their, um, their, their vans and they have to keep going. They have a set number of parcels they have to deliver. They're in a rush. They're going, go, go, go. They don't have time to sit around thinking about food. Oh, actually, I wouldn't mind a bit of that. Oh, I wouldn't mind a bit of that. Oh, now I'm craving something. They don't have time to think about craving. They just have to keep going. So I would urge you to try and set something up like this in your own life. I'm not saying go out there and start being a courier driver, although you could be, but what we really want to do here is create a busy routine for ourselves. Find something where you're serving somebody or find something that you're passionate about, which you can monetize or even if even if money isn't a problem, just find something where you are serving and that community requires you, requires you to go in that direction and, and really stay busy. And if you're staying busy, you'll find that the, the desires and the need for food, they will start to uh, evaporate. Uh, so yeah also we need to be looking at the food types as well what we're mixing so a lot of times um without realizing we're having loads of fats and then we're com we're combining those fats with high sugar foods so we may be having something like lots of rice with say um lots of meat or we might be having lots of potato with lots of deep fried uh, meat or, or fatty chicken or fatty fish or whatever uh, with extra oils. Um, a lot of times when, when we have this, I find that natural fats and natural sugars, as long as it's done in moderation, I mean, it's probably not the best of things because ideally our bodies prefer either having just sugars or just fats because uh, these are energy sources. Our body can use sugars or fats. We're, we have a hybrid body. It's a hybrid and it can run off sugars or fats for energy. Sugars, uh, the, the, uh, when, when the sugars sort of run low, then it will turn to fat. That can happen during, that moves you into a state of ketosis. And this can happen, I mean, babies are in a state of ketosis, for example. Um, so they predominantly live off the breast milk, mother's milk, uh, and that's high in fat. And so they live off that and they're in a state of ketosis. And then as you grow, they start to have their sugars and then the sugar is, fuel, is, is burnt as fuel. But we can run off either. So... We want to try to stick to one or the other. We want to either try and keep the sugars going, which, is, which would be in the form of a, a raw vegan diet, pretty much, or a vegan diet uh, with very low fat, it, incredibly low fat. Or you can go for a ketogenic diet. And a ketogenic diet will be more filling, um, but it's just predominantly pure fatty food. So you'd have fatty meat, fatty fish, you know, things like that, um, of that nature. Avocados and, and, and fatty vegetables and maybe even some nuts as well fatty nuts like macadamia nuts for example and that's all you would eat and then your body would recognize that you're actually switching it you're not giving it any sugar so now it starts to it needs to start using fat as its fuel and that's the point at which you will start to actually tap into your own fat reserves and so i guess for the most instant fat loss i would be thinking i'd be more inclined to be recommending uh, ketosis but again these things you need to double check with your consult with a doctor before changing any diets and um, always, always be working with your doctor on these things. Um, are you comfort eating without realizing, are you just picking for something, trying to make yourself feel better and, and move into a, a better state? What sort of state are you in if that's happening? What sort of state are you in? What are you feeling? How does that feel? How can you switch that state? How can, can, you, can you start to imagine a time when you were feeling exciting, uh, excited and buzzing and happy and full of energy and full of life? Think of that time and imagine how it would be to move into that state and push yourself into that state and smack away the, the state that is not serving you. Smack away that state that's pulling you down and making you comfort eat. Really become aware of it. Finally, I'd like to touch on the subject of accountability Get yourself accountability. You know, <clears throat> be around the people that are achieving this weight loss. Get yourself in a group. This is why uh, I think Weight, weight Watchers has been so successful. They, they get a group of people together and everyone's sort of like-minded and doing it together and there's a, there's a team feel, feel to it. So really get yourself some accountability partners. Get yourself around people that are also have the same goals as you and that are trying to move towards that and they have a real pain and a need to do it. And... Join up with those people and start to, I mean, with social media these days, you can, you can easily find like-minded people, people that are 
doing similar things. There's groups out there all over the place, forums, groups, um, where you can find accountability partners. Find these people, seek them out, start to converse, hold each other accountable, see what's happening on a daily basis with each other. If they're out of line, you straighten them out. If you're out of line, they should straighten you out. Um, or join some sort of groups. You could also, I guess coaching is also one option. Coaching is massive now. It's just because you might have all the knowledge. I mean, there's all this knowledge here. I've given you pretty much how to lose your weight right now here. So you've got it all for free. But the point is, is are you going to do anything with it? And I think that's where a coach comes in and a coach will try to guide you and help you to actually execute and apply the knowledge that you have. So that's another way of keeping accountability and keeping that guidance and having someone keep you in check. Um, or, 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 or have some sort of accountability partners in place and um, really immerse yourself in it and, and get moving. So that is the, the summary of uh, what to do if your weight loss isn't working and the sort of things to be aware of and the sort of actions you can start applying and implementing straight away.